Hey, and thanks for tuning in again um, as I make the transformation from civilian to the WASP expert yet again. Um, hope you all like this one. It's uh, for a bald faced hornet nest attached to a garage door frame. Um, so it should be kind of interesting. Uh, not sure how they've been using their garage the past uh, month or so. Um, guess we'll find out. Um, but so we're going out to Hopewell, a little village of Hopewell, to take care of that nest uh, this afternoon. And then tomorrow um, I'm scheduled to do my first uh, yellow jacket wall cutout. Um, maybe I'll bring the GoPro along for that one. Um, so I've, I was told um, that the yellow jackets had chewed a hole through the wall and it started coming through. So the customer tomorrow, um, they put uh, some cardboard up, taped some cardboard to the wall to keep them from coming in the house until I'm out there and I cut the nest out. Um, so haven't had a lot of bald faced horn nests. This is, I think, my fourth third or only maybe only my third bald faced horn nest of, of this year. I think I filmed the other two, but it's been a lot of yellow jacket nests, ground nest and um, structural nests. Um, so like more the, the more challenging ones in, in walls and some of them I have to refer out because I can't actually get to the nest. It's either vacuum for have the customer vacuum on themselves for two weeks or um, I end up cutting it out and usually they just go the chemical route. So I've just been referring some of those jobs out. So it's been a good year for the yellow jackets, um, for the bald faced hornet, which is technically a yellow jacket, but um, maybe not as good a year for bald faced hornets. Um, but hopefully you all enjoy this one. Uh, so turn it on again when I when I get there. All right. All right. There's the nest. I haven't went off yet, but July 18th, 2018, and here's my hand for comparison. So it's probably it's even a little bit bigger, about the size of a basketball. But, um, I mean, it's got another three, four months to go, so it's already uh, getting to be a monster. These are both building there. They'll actually meet each other, and they go back, and they spread the strips out, and that's a new layer, and they just kind of, it's like an onion. It just, they keep adding to it, and they take out the old layers to expand the combs inside, and this nest probably has a couple combs by now. Um, so this customer needed to get a door replaced over here. This door needed to be replaced, and they found the nest. I think it was this weekend. They tried spraying it, um, the spray they said, you know, of course it didn't do anything. Um, so that's why they called me. This nest probably already has, I don't know, it's hard, it's, I'm never good at it. I tend to underestimate the numbers, but I'd say around maybe 150, 150 workers, but they're, uh, they're pretty busy. Um, and they do spray venom. And I mentioned on another video that I said all yellow jackets spray venom, and I do believe that all yellow jackets do potentially have the ability to spray venom. Um, I know that the Eastern Yellow Jacket and the Southern Yellow Jacket both spray venom. Uh, the Southern Yellow Jacket smells like burnt maple syrup and the Eastern Yellow Jacket smells more like lighter fluid. They both, uh, this species, the Bald Faced Hornet, Eastern and Southern Yellow Jacket have all uh, peppered venom through my uh, face through the screen. But it's just that Bald Faced Hornets are a lot bigger and stronger so I think the behavior is more pronounced. So yes, um, I believe that most, if not all, yellow jackets do spray venom, and that's why I do have these glasses on, my ball cap, so the veil doesn't fall on my face when I'm looking up. So I take precautions. The only thing I don't have on is uh, my respirator, but the only time I really use that is if I'm cutting open drywall or pulling back insulation so I don't breathe in those fibers. Uh, so without uh, further ado, uh, we will get started. I'm just going to vacuum up into soapy water, drown them, and remove the nest, and there's probably more nest out there in the woods. Here they come. And the ones coming out of the nest are the ones that are gonna be in attack mode. The ones returning don't go into attack mode for some reason, I've learned that. That's why I wanna put the hole, the, um, the nozzle right up at the, the entrance and kinda suck them up before they can come out and swarm to sting me. I got one walking around on the camera. I only missed two so far that I could see. It could have been others, but that was it. So I'm trying to do it as thorough as I can. That's why I always get suited, because of course if I wasn't suited, I would uh, have a very swollen face, so to speak. I look like a fat, fat dude. I have a nice plump face. more of them. 
they're pissed. They hang on, they're actually stronger than you think. Yeah, I've had some people comment about the strength of this vacuum, but really it's more than sufficient. I tell anybody that comments that this vacuum is weak, get the same vacuum and try doing what I do. Guarantee it will work. You gotta have the technique. Of course, the technique's important, but you gotta understand the, the behavior of the wasp and you have the appropriate experience, but works pretty well. If you can hear me talking, that means I didn't put music over this. I may or may not do the music. I guess I watch the video when I do the music. I watch the video and see if it would be appropriate. I listen to what I say and then look at kind of how the video plays out. And if it allows, I, I put the music on. Because there's some, some songs that are copyright free that I like. So I try to put them up if I can. I probably won't be able to do a bike ride today. It's already about probably 4.50, 10 minutes to 5. I got out, I got out here about 4.30. Took me about 15 minutes to get set up, 15, 20 minutes. Try to get myself in the frame too. I lost the turning. I gotta put the camera down soon and get to work though. I need both hands sometimes. See, I guess uh, they haven't opened this door in a while. They have a nice surprise if they did. I think they told me last time the door was open was in May. This was probably about the size of a golf ball or maybe a little bit bigger than a golf ball back in May. yet remove the outer shell um, I've been going at it now for maybe 15 20 minutes um, got most of them but there's probably just a few foragers that are when I say a few I mean maybe it could be three or four dozen but within the next like half hour 45 minutes they'll be returning and so I just kind of play a waiting game for a while and uh, that's why they pay me the big bucks but anyway I just kind of wait until more return and then I fire it up again and then I'll remove that shell and we'll see what's inside. And this is kind of cool. It's like, you see how there's like the frame here for the garage door? It's like it kind of like goes over and waves the, the paper. This one and then that one. So it would just be, as year goes on, they just get more and more and more and more. All right, so I removed the shell. Second comb, so they have two combs now. And this is the second comb for this species always built um, rears uh, new queens and males sometimes. And then these cells are all used for rearing workers. And then like later in the season, they rear males. So like you can see these hatched out and then you got pupa, larva, and then these are the most, the newest cells on the periphery. And there are like eggs and very small larva. So you can kind of see the progression outwards. And then these cells in here were used probably three times at least, maybe on their fourth use, third or fourth use in the very center. You can see that larva there wiggling around waiting for food. Forager coming back. So I'm still not done yet, but I just wanted to show you, um, everyone the inside of this uh, beautiful, beautiful bald faced hornet's nest. The queen's probably up, up on top. Of, 
there hiding. That worker's not happy. She, she's, she's attacking that lens. I don't blame her. Like I said, I do feel bad doing this, but help people out if they have nests in a problem spot. So, kind of justified in this situation. All right, there's a the catch. And the nest. There's the queen. I said it was in a bad spot, but it's where the nest was. All right. Bye-bye. All right, so everything's uh, pretty much cleaned up as best as I could, and the customer can uh, power wash it if they want to, but this is all just cosmetic. I don't really do any, not really an issue. Um, so yeah, uh, another nest bites the dust. July the 18th, 2018, bye-bye.